All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the American Dota League. We've got another game for you here. It is Team Liquid's last game of the night, I believe, up against Smeagol. They've won two games in a row with two dominant performances, one over Team Dignitas in nine minutes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it was in nine minutes up against the great Team Dignitas. And then followed by Team Liquid versus Pain, where they won pretty handily as well on the backside of Korok's Anti-Mage as well. So they're looking to go ahead and take Smeagol. Smeagol fighting for their playoff position right now. They need to win at least uh, probably one or two more games to really secure their position in the playoffs here. Otherwise, if they lose both games tonight, if Pain International ends up winning their game tomorrow as well, it's a good chance that Smeagol might get out of the playoffs and Pain it would take their spot. But that being said, uh, I am Mott with me tonight, of course, is NY John. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, and the point you brought up is so important. Smeagol need to find a win, but they're up against the gauntlet tonight, having to beat either Liquid, Dignitas, or Evil Geniuses. Three really tough matchups that are going to really have an emphasis on whether or not they have a productive season, they make it into the postseason, or not, on the behalf of Smeagol. And certainly, if they make it, that means they're beating one of these top-tier teams, and then maybe they have potential in a series against them when they get to the playoff stages. But if they look hopeless here, this could be an omen of things to come, even if they sneak into the playoffs. But hopefully, Smeagol have something good in store for us. They definitely are a team with a lot of potential upside. You're absolutely right, and, and mentioning that potential is certainly really important. I think that a lot of these players kind of really not really that known, uh, except for maybe a few people around the North American Dota scene as well. I mean, you know, on the clouds, uh, of course, Smurf, formerly of Fnatic and A fame, and Josh Tabak Dota, Taku, who I believe played with GDT, or GTD, I can't remember which one it was. GDT, yeah, Global GDT. Domination Time. That's right. So there you go. You got that. Glad you know that. I'm glad uh, that you're here for those specific reasons, because I certainly didn't know that. But it, uh, it's going to be the Iro and, of course, the Gyrocopter ban from Team Liquid. That's going to give Batrider up to the Smeagol, and they've got the Visage and Darkseer ban. And that gives the Triant Protector to its creator, pretty much, of IX Mike 88 So Team Liquid, they've also got the Super Stand-In, Mojo Stormstat. What a player. He's jumping in here in this game, and we'll see how he plays. I wonder if that means they're going to go for the Moran on the later pick again. Uh... I know you weren't here last night, but IX Mike on that tree and protector was just casually roaming the jungle in invis, would find a target, use the overgrowth, and then they just set up the perfect arrow and kill people with two main gang squads of Korok on the Rana plus that tree and protector for IX Mike, who certainly was pretty fun to watch at times and really frustrating for their opposition, which I believe was inside at that point. But uh, it definitely is a possible option moving forward. They wouldn't pick it up here if they were going to go for it. So Liquid still with the second pick. Who do they want to add to this protector? Uh, still with the amount of supports available, I'd assume they're going to opt for something like a Shadow Demon, like a Bane, or one of the other supports that they prefer. They're going to go for a middle instead, though. So a Puck pretty early on in the draft here. It's going to give them a decent matchup if Batrider decides to go middle. Smeagol going to be pretty satisfied having that Batrider in hand already. Of course, the Lasso is an amazing skill. He's a great laner. And they're going to try and add something to that as well. Uh, maybe they go for a support to add on, or they can go for a carry. Uh, we've seen... Batrider have some success with Lifesteal on this team, and if they want to try and pick that up, this wouldn't be a bad place to try and go for it. Yeah, absolutely, and that Batrider, you, you mentioned how they're pretty happy with that, and I think that's just one of the best heroes out there, but Tree and Protector as well. Um, the good thing is for the side of Smeagol, they do have that Firefly, they have that damage over time ability to kind of just make that living armor a little bit less useful, but they're going to go ahead and pick up the Lifestealer as well, and these two heroes together kind of give you a little bit of a, a bomb as well, not quite like a Spirit Bomb, just uh, a little bit less, obviously you need to get a Blink Dagger for that Bat Rider, but they will have that Nix initiation with that Infest, so that's something that's important to note. Yeah, and then natural symmetry, that, too, in the, the lockdown, of course. If you can hold the target still, Life Stealer absolutely destroys them. Right, right, right. But, I mean, there's also the point that I want to make that, that Puck can use that winning rift to get that silence off and kind of make that rider's life a little bit more miserable than it should be. Uh, with that being said, of course, some big bands coming out. The Outworld Devourer, who is, like I said before, I mean, they're going to ride that train, that OD train. I mean, people are still going to pick him up and realize just how good of a hero that is. The Storm Spirit ban as well, going out for Team Liquid, whereas the ban is coming out from Smeagol. And one more ban on top of that is going to be coming in just a moment. We'll see what it is uh, in just a few seconds here. Of course, uh, banning out the supports to the length of lockdown with Bane is very important. That Shadow Demon is still available. If they want to ban that out, they absolutely can, but that kind of limits the pool for themselves. Um, and Smeagol definitely needs some supports right now. You already have got the tree and protector for Team Liquid, so they've got that going for them. But with 1 minute and 44 seconds left on reserve time, they will go ahead and ban the Clockwork. Bulb is not here, so I think they're less inclined to pick up the Clockwork now that he's not here. And Lich is going to go for Team Liquid, surprisingly enough. And this is very interesting. 
Because you usually see Lich against a hero that you want to really do well against the mid lane and just do a dual mid, but I'm not sure that's what they want to do here. We've been seeing a lot more Lich as a, a soul laner as well, but these picks are flying out. And Weaver is that prototypical hero you see with Tree and Protector all the time because you can be high risk, high reward with that particular 1-2 combo. And it certainly can be successful in this game as well. Uh, Weaver with a great mobility is able to get away from open wounds pretty safely. Uh, it's a little bit tougher for Batrider to lock him down because if they don't kill him in that first burst, time lapse will come into effect and heal him up and, and kind of waste that really big cooldown for the bat. So I, I do like the Weaver pick here. I think Weaver is one of those heroes that you could almost throw him in any lineup and justify him because he has the minus armor. He could fit in almost any lane. And he's just so mobile, has great degree of survivability. And since the lockdown heroes, uh, aside from the bat, are out of the equation, you know, they focus the bat's attention on the Weaver, and Weaver goes for a Lincoln's or something to that effect, then it, you could have an issue. And, and usually you pick up a second carry with Weaver. Some teams, as we see in other games going on, like to pick up a, a third and maybe even a fourth carry with Weaver, but that's not too typical. So uh, you could see where this is going to be good for Liquid. They have Weaver, they have a Deny from Lich. Their lanes are shaping up very, very well with the Stream Protector Living Armor in effect as well. Yeah, I mean, I, this is definitely Team Liquid's lineup. And Quantic, of course, I think popularizing the Tree and Weaver synergy, just making it so effective just because Weaver has so much movement and so much mobility, he can get away with doing a lot of crazy stuff, especially with Living Armor protecting him as well. So... That's really important to note that they've got that aggression coming forward. Smeagol's lineup's a little bit more, I guess, uh, 6.77 kind of thing, whereas Team Liquid is moving towards that new kind of lineup. And we talked about this before, how 6.78 brings new lineups and stuff like that. And Liquid was kind of stuck in a rut, picking the clockwork over and over again and picking those weird tri lanes. But tonight they've seemed to be playing in all cylinders here. Uh, and I mean, like, they, even with the you know, their, I guess, prototypical tri lane that you would see in 6.77 in the first game against Dignitas, they did absolutely fantastically with it. So, Team Liquid, of course, now playing with the Trian, which, you know, I guess you could say Ix Mike invented. I mean, I say that a lot, and I just about it a lot, but for all intents and purposes, it's kind of true. Not many people kind of realize the power of Trian Protector. Loda tried to use it as a carry, I think, first and foremost, uh, when he tried to go, like, Radiance on the Trian and, like, just damage. There's the Taker coming up from Smeagol. But then, you know, there was this period where people were like, all right, so support Trian. Living armor is pretty good. And then 6.78 came out, and then all hell broke loose, kind of. So, super interesting for Liquid. Tinker for Smeagol right now, which is a, very interesting because they already have that Bat Rider. Can send Tinker into a multitude of locations. Not sure what they're, what they're going to do with him, though. Yeah, the first time I remember seeing Trian actually was in one of the Staff Cups. The the Good Studios team used him as an offlaner, which was pretty interesting with that living armor in play. That was right after the buff, with one of the first Staff Cups ever. But certainly they were onto something that a lot of the professional teams didn't catch on to until much later on. Uh, a couple of reworks for living armor made it a little bit more of a strong ability, especially early on in the game. And that's where we are now. Jakiro's going to be banned out from Liquid. Smeagol looking for a final ban here with the Tinker Lifestealer and Batrider. Uh, it makes you want to assume that Tinker's going to end up in that middle lane, and that seems like a pretty safe assumption. That means Bat is either off lane or in the jungle if they want to try and sack that off lane. And we have seen Bats in the jungle succeed in the past. Mm -hmm. You can get your farm pretty quickly, have that blink up around the 11 minute mark. But sacking a lane is always risky, and there it is. <laughs> you the were Marana right, man. Pick. You were right on the money. I, and I'm like excited for this because now I get to witness, hopefully, what exactly you were talking about earlier. So. Uh, that's going to be Team Liquid's last pickup here. And you mentioned Batrider and the Jungle for Smeagol. I definitely think that's a possibility. Um, I mean, it, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but they do have one pickup left here. And, and I don't know. I'm not sure what they're going to go for. They've got... They need a support, I think. I, I'm, like, positive Smeagol needs to grab another support here. Yeah, they do. And uh, they need... I'd say they need a hard disable. And they're going to get the Rubik. Rubik being available at the 5 slot is the value pick. And... Uh, probably the best option they can go for there they went so, to big lots for that pickup right there, <laughs> yeah so. they seriously shout out to big lots they should sponsor the adl All right, but I uh, um i think both teams have pretty solid lineups tinker doesn't have i usually when i see tinker i want to see a lone druid or a 
nature's prophet in play because it gives him that extra bit of mobility with being able to TP into those creeps. Doesn't really have that, but he's still a good hero nonetheless. Of course, he can make some of these heroes miss for five seconds, which will be really frustrating for either Weaver or Morana. And, of course, he's another hero that can take down Living Armor rather seamlessly. So we'll see how it plays out. It's going to be heavy game focus. It's another game that could be make or break inside of 15 minutes, really, looking at these lineups. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right, but we will have to see if that does pan out. I mean, Liquid, they've been the... Uh... Sub 20 minute marathon champs here. I mean, they've absolutely just taken down each opponent they face tonight in relatively fast speed. We are going to jump into the game in just a moment, guys, ladies and gentlemen. But first, a pause coming up from Fluff here. But in the meantime, we will introduce the lineups. Once again, thank you for joining us on the ADL. My name is Mont. With me tonight is NY John. Mike is BRB, according to Fluff. And Smeech, uh, Peachy, not Smeechy, <laughs> says K. So I actually try to combine SMG and Peachy there. But that didn't work out too well there. So for Liquid, we've got TC up on the puck. Fluff will be on the Lich. Mojo Stormstout, the Super Saiyan, if you will, will be on the Weaver. Korok on the Marana, the bottom. And IX Mike is going to be playing the Triant Protector. Down in the Radiant side for Smeagol. SMG Smurf going to be on that Tinker. Hasu is going to be on the Life Stealer. Clouds on the Clouds is going to be on the Rubik. Peachy will be on the Bat Rider and round it out. Taku will be on the Shadow Demon. And hello. Hello. Yeah, what friendly chat. Usually this doesn't happen between two North American teams. And you're going to get flamed now. You should be careful. No, it's I don't. It's dangerous territory. Listen, why am I being flamed? I'm just saying hello. <laughs> That's really aggressive, Mont. You should probably uh, no, be consider. You know, you're so right. <laughs> <laughs> it's really We're getting into the game now, and I, I, I'm curious to see. Peachy is a mid player, so this probably means that the bat is going to make his way to middle, actually. And uh, does that mean they're going an aggressive tri lane with Clouds, Taku, as well as Hasu? I think so, as Hasu's yeah. going towards the top, so it's going to be solo tinker down bottom up Wait. against a Weaver, and that's a pretty bad lane. Weaver can do really well against a Tinker, Wait. It, by my estimation, and they could do duos too, or they could just give an early deny to him. I'm not sure if Fluff's going to commit this lane or not. What's happening here? Taku's heading mid right now. Clouds is heading bottom. I'm a little confused about this landing situation here, but I, you know what? I'm just not going to question it. I'm going to let it go. Down in the bottom lane, you've got a Weaver and Lich, it looks like. Mojo's heading mid, as you can see. It looks like Trance here as well. It's going to be mid, though, for TC up top. It's probably going to be Korok solo. If they want to do that aggressive trial, then they absolutely can. But for right now, I don't know what Taku's doing. Peachy's going to be mid. I thought it would be an aggressive trial lane, but they might just do duels. They might do dual top and dual bottom. But then going up against aggressive trial lane might be dangerous. But they also might do dual top and dual bottom for Liquid as well. So that's what it's looking right now. I don't think I've seen a 2-1-2... You know, for both teams in quite some time. This is very strange that we're seeing this right now, but also very surprising and cool, I think. Yeah, I think I actually saw someone run a 2 and 2 but you're right, both teams is very rare as oh, you see isn't going on Marana. Yeah, he might even just open wounds him right now. He hasn't skilled anything up right now. Uh, that living armor is going to go off already, but I asked Mike there just in case, just for that moral support. But SMG not able to get anything done there. They were looking for that rune. Uh, I think uh, they picked it up. It was Weaver grabbing that regen rune down bottom. So Mojo and Fluff are going to be down here. And this dual lane should be okay for them. They're going to be consistently denying with that sacrifice. So Fluff is going to be doing a good job there. Throwing up the armor and doing Frost Blast as well on top of that. But he's going to be against Clouds. And Clouds on that Rubik. Rubik's a good support, I think. Especially when you've got him here with Smurf. Who can deal a lot of that burst damage. So Mike's going to have to be on point with that living armor. And right now, uh, that's really the most important thing. That disruption did go already up in the top lane. But... This is going to be a really a game of really aggression. TC is going to be mid. He's already got four last hits up against zero right now for Peachy. So very surprising that TC is actually dominating this matchup this early on. So we'll see how this does go into, of course, the early stages of the game. He's up to five now, but you can see roaming through. Fluff is going to go and throw up a ward here on this little ward spot here or not. I thought it was, but I, I, I lied. Never mind. Yeah, and this is uh, kind of interesting. We see the Sentry was dropped, but it was after the creeps had spawned. So uh, Fluff, his obligation was to deny the creep as early as possible so he can get a second deny. And he's going to stand here to prevent the pull through, but it's blocked anyway. So actually, that's not the case. He's just standing there to get some of the last hits. But this bottom lane, if we look at it objectively, with the deny coming out from Fluff on that Lich, it's a lane that's probably going to go pretty well for the Dire. And that's good if your off lane is going to look somewhat favorable. It definitely is... A uh, good outlook for Liquid down here. They're going to need to either get some kills. You're talking about the burst damage potential, and it certainly is there in some regards, but get some kills without trading because if, if they do try and initiate on Fluff and don't get the kill easily, then Weaver's going to be able to clean up probably Rubik, maybe even Smurf as well because of the sheer early game damage output from Weaver. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we are we just saw the Shikuchi damage from Mojo hitting up the Rubik, doing a lot of damage there. So that's something to keep him in mind. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fluff's going to go ahead and pick up that Invis Rune. He's not level 2 yet, so he can't really do anything if like, he wanted to roam mid and throw a Frost Blast up. So he's going to have to head back to the lane, grab some more experience. Up in the top lane, Disruption is going Living Armor, Open Wounds as well. So Korok taking a bit of damage, but that Living Armor already just being very useful. And that's only level 1, by the way. So Ix Mike doing his job. However, he's out of mana right now. So this is uh, where... Here we go, Smurf in trouble. Yep, meanwhile, Smurf trying to do some damage here to Mojo, of course, using that right click, the salve, saving his life right now, and Smurf's gonna go down, Fluff grabbing that kill. Mojo playing very aggressively, but that salve just in time, or was it living armor? I'm not sure, but at the end of the day, it worked really well. They got that first blood, and somehow, Smurf, and he was looking for that kill with, of course, that Marcel machine, he's just not able to get it. You saw how close it was. Living armor is up on Mojo, he needs a little bit more regen, he's got two more tangos, so he should be okay. But a good, good first blood for the side of Liquid once again. Yeah, and that wasn't the Living Armor, that was a salve. So it was a really good play by MSS to make sure he got that off. That was crucial. And now Smurf is going to play pretty angry as he runs forward in lane. Oh, he, he's doing a good job of trading auto attacks and still getting his last CS. So you can see he has a fair bit of control in this Tinker. TC but... and Fluff going on mid right now. Peachy taking some damage. He's going to Firefly up onto the high ground, but not enough time as that Frost Blast slows and TC grabs the kill. Nice rotation from Fluff. Huh? Sorry to cut you off there, it's but... It's perfectly fine. I didn't even see it happening, and it's because you don't expect the Lich to solo roam and get a kill. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what happened there. So Fluff is kind of playing next level right now with this, these big plays coming out from a Lich. It's just not what you expect to see. And Weaver is a hero that's perfectly fine in this bottom lane by alone, but I just wanted to note that the Sentry is down now, so MSS has to be a little bit more careful. I'm not sure if he knows about it yet, but... Uh, definitely can get himself into a little bit more trouble where last time he was able to survive he might drop this time around to top lane uh, Mike's in trouble he's going down oh and that arrow is actually gonna hit an illusion it looks like there and yeah Mike did go down not able to catch that action there so Mike getting caught out of position just a little bit a nice pickup for SMG here uh, Korok wants to go on uh, Hasu here. He has Feast Over, so Korok cannot really afford to trade hits, as you can see. Down in that bottom lane, you can see the march is going to go. Fluff's got to be careful. Tell can he some Fluff. Fluff, Fade Bolt, still taking a lot of damage. Not enough. Fluff needs to get out of there, though. He's got a TP or something. He will go down, but Weaver will grab that trade, which we talked about. That's exactly what you didn't want to have happen. Yes, Murf got the kill, but not until he went down, so he did lose that experience that he would have gained had he been alive to pick up the kill on Fluff. Yeah, and this lane's just set up for trades. At any time, SMG try to initiate on one of these heroes, MSS is probably going to get a kill in return. And, and that's what I'm really worried about. MSS is going to get engaged on now. He's in a little bit of trouble because that ward is no still mana. down. He has no mana right now. MSS, he's just trying to run away. But nice living armor from Mike, and that's going to stop the aggression there. So Mojo is going to go ahead and survive. Meanwhile, TC picking up another kill on the Batrider. Looks like it was a solo one especially. And it looks like even Taku rotated in to try to help out. So... Uh, Liquid taking these fights early on, the trades we talked about, and now he's going to TP back in. But early on, Liquid taking this game, 2,000 experience as well as 2,000 gold going their favor. Now there's a disruption as well as a Shadow Poison. Need the Soul Catcher. Nice silence. TC, he's going to head jaunt. Nicely done. And the Flame Break far away actually pushes him closer to the tower than necessary. So they try to get that kill, but they just couldn't get it with, of course, the Illusory Arb and how slippery Puck is. So nice try coming out from SMG. Not able to get that kill. And, of course, TC playing that puck pretty effectively right now yeah and another factor in play in this game is because they did allow them to run duo lanes by not punishing one lane in particular that is smg then liquid is really the team benefiting from this because they're getting extra levels on tree and protector and tree and protector is a kind of hero that first off there's a big payoff in the form of overgrowth at level six as he's in a little bit of trouble here yeah the open wounds are gonna go he's gonna go ahead and living arm himself right now nice disruption from taku to stop him Marana from uh, aggressing there looking for an arrow or something just trying to chase after taku hasu realizes he's got to back off and go on korok right now there's the soul catcher oh just the Star Storm doing so much damage. Hasu using his rage right now, barely surviving, but the hammer fist from IX Mike will pick up the kill. Two down up in that top lane. Mike was in trouble. Korok says no. And they kind of switched targets there mid fight. Meanwhile, now another gank from Fluff here. And PGT's he's gonna go down with the waning ref. TC grabbing another kill. It's two to seven. And once again, Liquid is rolling, and they don't seem to have any signs of stopping either. It's a slippery slope for Smeagol right now. They really have to try and stabilize, otherwise this is going to be a quick one. Because yeah. you can see that top lane gank just going horribly wrong for them. And that's because of the living armor. I mean, they have a couple of heroes that work pretty effectively against it between Batrider and Tinker. But a solo lifestealer is not a hero that should be 
focusing all his attacks on a target that has the living armor on him. That's probably a sign that, you know what, we can't get this kill, we should back up a little bit and play it more cautiously, but instead, they end up losing two heroes to that gank, and then middle, uh, TC and Fluff rowing in from time to time are just having a phenomenal time here. Fluff's almost level 6 already, uh, Mike's almost level 6 already, and if we check out the levels across the board, uh, ooh, Taku's in trouble top, though. Meanwhile, Taku up in the top lane right now. He's going to disrupt himself. Hasu's there to help out, but Taku is, in fact, going to fall. Meanwhile, double damage down in that bottom lane. I want to see what's happening here, but Korok's still taking damage from that Soul Catcher. He's got a leap away. Will, in fact, do so. Hasu's going to try to escape. Meanwhile, they pick up a double kill for TC down in that bottom lane. Action all over the map. Checking, checking back top. Double kill for Korok with that Star Storm. Just in time, I was able to get back on the mini map and pick up that kill on the camera. Oh, man. These guys are making it hard for me. Korok is ridiculous because he has so much confidence with the Star Storm that after he casts it, he walks away and knows that the second proc is just going to fall on his target. <laughs> I, I, he doesn't even put the auto attack animation there. He just knows it. That's He did it the other day. He did it today again. He's just so confident. And I feel like one day that's going to miss proc and he's going to lose a kill out of it. But until that point, he's proving me wrong. And it just makes him look like a true G as TC gets oh. another kill in the middle lane. This time on Taku, the Shadow Demon. And Shadow Demon really just can't stand against him. He's only level 5 against TC's level 9 on the puck. It's just... Not fair, honestly. Yeah, and meanwhile, down in that bottom lane. Oh, again, eight minutes. <laughs> they broke their record this time around. And Smeagol, not the performance they were looking for. Oh, what a game. What a set of games from Team Liquid. They they ran the gauntlet, and all three games, they just outperformed every single team. Just to the nth degree. And TC grabs another kill. He's going to go ahead and look for this last one. But Korok, nope. TC's going to steal right underneath Korok's nose. Getting a double kill. He'll also phase shift to avoid the tower damage. But there goes the game. The entire dire so rating site, excuse me, disconnecting. Nobody even hit level 11. 846 game time, by the way. Not including the draft, ladies and gentlemen. But, jeez. Yeah, you want to hear the amazing thing? Is that <laughs> Liquid... Just won three games in 38 minutes. Elapsed time. We spent more times between some of these games than we did in all three of the games for Liquid. They're absolutely dominating the ADL right now. And uh, Smeagol sitting there looking for the sixth seed. Uh, they probably are going to get matched up against EG, but uh, I mean, they got to be terrified of whoever they're going to be matched up against if they're playing like this because they did not look very good this game. No, absolutely not. Smeagol, they, they wanted to get... Yeah, they had that, uh, they had, of course, the Batrider pickup, and that was working for them, but, you know, it, somehow Puck wins that lane pretty handedly. I mean, TC just absolutely dominated that mid lane, but that's going to be it for Team Liquid tonight, I believe. We do, however, have more action coming to you in just a moment. I believe we've got Team Dignitas versus Smeagol up next, so Smeagol going to try to put up a better showing here, and then to finish off the night, we'll have Smeagol versus Evil Geniuses as well, and Smeagol, they need to pick up one or two wins here to make it real safe for them, but it's going to be tough, so we'll have to see if they can accomplish that. Once again, thank you for joining us on the American Dota League. Check out AmericanDotaLeague.com, Twitter.com slash American Dota, and Twitch.tv slash American Dota League. Pick up the American Dota League ticket for $5 if you enjoy American Dota, if you want to support American Dota as well. We certainly would love you to support it. Definitely would be great. Um, once again, my name is Maul. You can follow me at twitter.com slash dota 2 With me tonight is, of course, NY John. You can follow him at twitter.com slash nyjohntv and twitch.tv slash nyjohntv. And uh, any shout-outs before we get to the next game? No. Uh, I'm hoping. I'm friends with a couple of players on Smeagol, and I hope they're able to turn this around and at least get some good games going against one of these teams because this is a tough set of three to start off like this. An eight-minute GG, and now you're going into two matchups that aren't getting much easier between Dignitas and Evil Geniuses. So hopefully they can find some morale somewhere and rally the troops. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, we will be jumping into that game in just a moment, guys. If you have any uh, criticism, you know, you want to give us some shout-outs in chat, please do so. Of course, we enjoy any feedback that we can get. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter, especially the American Dota League as well, on top of that to get more American Dota updates. And we'll be back in just a moment, guys, so stick around. Thanks for joining us.